Hey, it's Joey Baladonna here from Anthrax, and this is Sagas. Uh. Oh. Oh. Look, this is a big one. I didn't break out and join the podcast today. It is now time for Devil's Advocate. Hey. Same time, same place, for something. What's going on, everybody? This is your boy Corbin, the Serpentine Skipwith. And Rand the Bazaar is. Is Sagas. Yes. Episode 32, COVID edition. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to explain yourself to the viewers. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit under the weather with the old COVID at the moment. So uh, if I'm a little slow, we but my chat here, that's why. <laughs> and we thought Vikings were tough. Yeah, no, it's crazy, man. Ah, sure. <laughs> Can even get to us fucking Vikings, huh? <laughs> I'm sure your Vikings, I'm sure your ancestors are smiling down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So this week, as we said last week, um, we'll be covering the latest album by band Memphis Mayfire came out this year and it is titled Remade in Misery featuring 11 tracks and I think this is the second album we've done this year because I think the Celtic Hills record came out this year so this is the second 2022 record that we're covering which is pretty cool um so let's start since it's my my choice let's hear from you first what did you think about it yeah, do you know, it's funny because I haven't listened to these in a long time and I really liked the Hollow album. I thought it was brilliant. It was, uh, when that came out first, it was really unusual for me to listen to music like this. Um, it was kind of early in the days of metalcore and all that. But um, for me, being slightly older than the generation that this was their metal, you know, um, it was surprisingly very good for, you know, I was like, you know, th this is interesting, interesting concept, interesting, interesting stylistically. Um, I loved it. It was a lovely concept album, The Hollow. Um, every song had the at the start. So when you said to me that we were going to cover these boys, I was like, very interesting because I've kind of lost track of them. You know, I listened to the album after this. I think it was challenger was it and and they had another album then i lost i lost sight of them completely after that so uh, i think we're, i was only two or two albums behind when i started listening to this one and yeah man i was really surprised um there was a i you know i lost touch on the actual albums and listened to the tracks but i'd still heard what you know reviews about them and what people had said about the band in recent years and it's nice that they seem to have done a complete turnaround to you know their sounds where they came from you know they they've gone back to their roots of their their direction which is really really nice so the minute i listened to it i did feel the same sense off the hollow from this album so straight away i was like sweet <laughs> <That'll do. laughs> nice um you know it's funny this this band brings me back to like what was it? The uh, no, the uh, the mid to late two thousands, early twenty tens. Because I don't know, I'm not sure what it was like for you, but in those years, because I was two thousand twelve, I graduated high school, so I was eighteen that year, or the or the year the year after. And in those years, everything it, it it was just a magical random period because everything from um everything from heavy metal, metalcore. Deathcore, it was all just called Screamo for like a so many years. No one, no one deciphered it. It was just Screamo or Emo. That, that was like the two terms. So th this band came in that category back then. I just remember hearing them and everyone's like, oh, have you heard the new Screamo band? And we all just, we, we, we all just went along with it. It's like, yeah. Fuck it. But um, it's funny because, and this is an opinion that might be very controversial. Um, It's a good thing for them, but maybe when I say this, a lot of people is going to, maybe we'll finally get some comments in our section like hating on me for it but in my opinion this is this is this is actually a lot tougher to say than i thought but um in my opinion maddie the lead singer i think he's the mainstream equivalent of the new queen 
Freddie Mercury. Not in in obviously they have different styles, but every single song on a Memphis Mayfire album, and I saw them live, so I can attest to this. It it it's like an anthem. Every song they sing is like anthem status, no matter what it is. Every song, it's like that's the same vibe Freddie Mercury had. Every song was just an anthem of some sort, like whether it be a power anthem or a ballad or a um, political anthem, like it was an anthem of some sort. And this is the same vibe I get, not just this album, all their albums, but talking about this one, I get the same feel, the same powerful tone in his voice, the same um, leader-like qualities that he has when he talks. He sings, everyone listens. And um, like immediately, whenever I hear this band, I think of Queen in the fact of how much the front man, both of them, Maddie and Freddie, have that commanding control and that kind of author like kind of the the authoritarian feel to them like i'm the leader my message is strong and then projects it to the audience like i don't know it's the same power that i haven't heard anyone else very few people do since freddie mercury so i've always felt that since the start and i feel it with this one now yeah i mean uh, I, I I totally get you. I know it, it sounds um <clears throat> strange connection, but it is, you know, the one thing I will always say about this band and from the moment I heard them was, wow, he is a killer frontman. He is an absolutely exceptional vocalist. I mean, he's gone from every range of heavy metal vocals from their first album to now. And you can hear he still gets better every album. It's unreal. Um, I remember hearing a, a quote of his years ago and he was like, you know, and I love this. I love this. And I actually found it quite inspirational as well. But he was like, um, I can do whatever I want with my voice, he said. And that really resonated with me. I was like, wow, like he's that confident in what he does that quite literally, if he wants to sound a certain way, he can do it. You know, <laughs> that's pretty powerful. It's a powerful statement. But he's able to back it up. It's it's actually really cool. Um, he, he's an interesting character as well because he's a very uh he's a very timid, placid kind of dude, very down to earth. Um, off stage and then he's on stage, and he's very commanding. He commands the, the stage, his areas, his voice. Um, <clears throat> on this album as as well. I mean, I absolutely loved the stuff he done on the Hollow, but this one, I think he topped it again. The heavier is the heavier, you know, the the the, the raspiness is raspier. There's just, you know, he's he's a gifted chap. And I can relate on another sense that he's he has a very strong faith. His he's a very strong uh, Christian faith, which isn't the same faith as mine, but I can understand how important it is to have that and and be able to acknowledge that in your music. You know, he, they don't sing about they're not Christian rock around like that. They don't sing about that stuff but you know he'll talk about it in interviews and it's such a strong force behind them that gives him the belief to do what he does and he pushes the boundaries with his vocals you know we talk about amazing vocalists all the time on this but he's definitely up there and um freddie mercury to me would be the best vocalist of all time the best frontman of all time and uh it's 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 crazy that you can actually put somebody from a metal core or the old uh, description of them, Screamo, into the same category as, as him. It's it's mad. But, you know, if you were to take this chap, Matty Mullins, out of this band and put him into any other band, he would be able to do the job. It's as simple as that. So, uh, yeah, 100% Matty Mullins. I agree with you on that one, dude. You know, one little side note, talking about Freddie, which I agree with. Um, you know, do you find it interesting? I don't know if you know this, but in the Rolling Stones magazine, um, this is an old article, but um, they were listing the top frontmen of all time, top 100 frontmen. And number two was Axl Rose. Does wow. that surprise you at all? It surprised me. No, yeah, you know, I think he's, he's a little overrated. I mean, he, he is, uh, you know, well, he was an excellent frontman and he had his own thing. Um, so I think that's the, one of the most important things with a frontman is that they have their own thing. You know, Axel had his own thing and his voice was ridiculous. But, um, you know, he wasn't able to sustain that over the years and yeah. whatever, you know what I mean? Like he's 60-something and he's still on stage. So, you know, yeah. fair play to him. <laughs> yeah, I just found, yeah, I just found that interesting. Like, you know, Freddie Mercury is a no-brainer for number one, but number two, Axel yeah. was like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> but, but anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Um, 
one thing I've got to say at the very start of this is that I will contest one thing about Memphis Mayflower, and that is in the first track. Now, Memphis, I do love you guys, but trust me, you can trust the words of this serpent because I am the serpent tongue and I never lie. Because in the first song, there's a lyric that goes, you can't trust the lyrics of a serpent. And I'm like, I took that personally, man. I'm cancelling you. For that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I found that really okay. cool. And I actually reviewed this album called Metal Blade Records. And um, I actually wrote that in there too. Like, you can trust the words of this serpent. Yeah, something close. <laughs> but, um, nice, yeah. you know, what's interesting. I got it. And this is a really weird comparison. And anyone who's listened to both, the, uh, both these albums may not agree with my comparison, but I felt like, especially towards the back end of the um, the second half of the album, I felt like there was a lot of strong, like, sleeping with sirens. I don't know if you're familiar with that band. Um, sleeping with yeah. sirens vibe, it's like, because towards the back end, they fuse a lot of hip hop elements to it. A bit of almost, almost R&B, like, there's a few songs where it's like, kind of like, Reminds me, of, reminds me of the Sleeping with Sirens song, Roger Rabbit, where it has that um that funky, dun, 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 but in this song, it has its own one. And it's just like him mixing, it just proves that he can mix anything, whether it be metalcore, whether it be new metal hip hop influences, whether it be kind of kind of ballads, emotional tracks, hard hitting tracks. And um, but like I said, like I just love how, as we just spoke about, you can hang on every word this guy said and he makes it sound like an anthem like the first song and he's like you know the chorus blood's not thicker than water after all anyone can say that you know if you said that if i said that it's like whatever it's it's a cool phrase but the way that he says it it just kind of imprints imprints on your mind like fuck because he has such a powerful voice and um i love how how this this album isn't tied down to any one specific genre there's influences everywhere and um you know, obviously there are some songs I prefer more than others, but overall, I think, I think, I think, like as you said, he's evolved his sound. He's evolved. He's evolved his voice, and just the fact that he can perform so many amazing melodies, screams, death growls, like everything on this track. Um, like you know, everything, everything on this album. It's just amazing how he's come, where he's come from, where they've come from, to now, and he still has that power. Um, going through them, and um, it's really an amazing thing. Yeah, I mean, like, overall, the, the entire album is, it's like, you can hear, there's a few tracks in particular that I'll chat about later that do this completely in the one song. But, but overall, this album is essentially taking every element of their evolution and just throwing it all into the one basket. It's uh, it's really nice to hear a band do that, you know, like... um. There's uh, some really cool bits, you know, talking about Matty's, you know, his, uh, his stage presence and whatever. This this album has ridiculous production, for one thing. Um, I don't really know much about the guy who produced it. His name is Cameron Mizzle, um, but also the guitar player, Kellen, um, Kellen McGregor. He, uh, uh, don't know if you know that reference yet. Yeah, Conor McGregor. Oh, <laughs> um so yeah he kellen is like a like a really we talk about matty uh, as a gifted guy kellen's also a gifted guy you know he as far as i know he's the one member in the band that was there from the start so he's essentially been the the guy that's been making this happen for a long time um he's a wicked guitar player he's got really great songwriting skills and his producing side of him is is uh, on form as well like um, another big thing that stands out with these guys with the production is their drum sound. It's always it's so fat that it 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 almost doesn't sound like a real kit at times. It's like I don't know how they manage to get it to sound so fat. Like everything, you know, they 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 focus a lot on the lower end of the drum kit. You know, the the cymbals are fairly down in the mix, so a lot of it is like this big pounding kick and this massive snare drum it's it's a it's a pretty unique it's a interesting sound you know but for matty to i think it, that probably lends a lot to matty in the mix you know that you can he can cut right through and ah, it's, it's it's excellent like i mean the album in a whole is huge you know it's loud and then it's punchy and there's all like every type of scream you could possibly want on a record um it's you know overall it's a really good album um 
But, uh, you know, you're talking about Blood and Water. You know, that's heavy. Like, that's the first track in the album. It comes out straight off the bat. It's heavy. But there's loads of hooks in it as well. And it's very singable. Um, it's just, uh, it's killer. It's, it's, it's Memphis Mayfire of old sound straight off the bat. So you're like, you know, from, from somebody that listened to them a long time ago, it's a really interesting kind of album in that sense. Like, you know, <coughs> you know what's funny? It's like, I mentioned how I saw them live. I think it was 2013. And um, I didn't know because my friend bought us tickets. And I didn't know that because Sleeping With Sirens was the headline. And um, I didn't know the other side bands. As in, as in I didn't know them personally. And I didn't, and I didn't know there would be side bands <laughs> coming. Um, so I went there and Memphis Mayfire was the second act because it went, what was me? Another metalcore band. And then Memphis Mayfire. Mem- <laughs> Ironically, Memphis Mayfire left a bigger impression on me that night than Stephen Mossarens. I love Stephen Mossarens and it was an amazing main line, uh, main gig. But it's just like when I got to experience for the first time, especially without knowing like the command that the band has, Maddie, and just like, he was like at the front and he was like, you know, singing and it's just like, oh shit, like I felt the presence, that aura that he, um, the very singable but powerful aura, similar to Freddie, like the same, you know, like almost every song of Queen, it's singable because of how great Freddie is. And um, yeah, so they've just always been that kind of band that stands out from the rest. Cause you know, obviously, obviously there are hundreds of amazing singers in metalcore, screamo, emo, you know, there's tons you know, close your eyes and pick one, you'll find one. There's amazing vocalists everywhere. But the, the thing that makes Maddie stand out is that he has the it, the aura, the 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 leader presence about him. That like kind of like and he's Christian, so this makes sense. He's kind of like a like a church preacher. I guess the same energy yeah. as a church preacher, like you speak <laughs> and everyone listens. Um obviously the Vikings burn in flames. But you know, for the rest of us, it's like we stand there and take it. <laughs> um but yeah, so that's the kind of vibe I get. And someone who was raised in a Christian family, I can feel like the the strength, the aura, the uh, the conviction, conviction in his voice. And I think that's what stands out from the rest. Because you know, obviously, a singer's job is to sing. They do it well. You know, they get they get listeners, whatever they get, they get rich. But he has conviction. He is like like he believes everything he's saying. He believes every sentence. He believes his messages. And um. For example, there's even a song on here towards the back end with um with AJ Channel of Fire from the Gods towards the back end, and he he um on the song Only Human, and you know that's another song with a big message like you know people think they're better than you, people think they're doing better than you. It's like there's a line I'm pretty sure it's like like if you like if you think you can do better, why don't you? And it's like two strong personalities coming together. Um, the feature doing like the harsher vocals, kind of like it, it's almost hip hoppy in the flow, and then you have Maddie doing the, the the melody and the harmonies. It's just a perfect combination. Um, but yeah, so it's that aura and that conviction that he has that ninety percent of bands don't have. And you know, it's it's not a bad thing not to have it. You don't need it, but when a band has it, or when a singer or anyone has it, you take notice. You're like, oh shit, that guy. Yeah, it, it's it's just something that that people take notice of when you have it. And although it's not necessary to have in a band, um, when when someone does, yeah, you take notice. And it's you know it's nice to see that is still something that people admire and seek and you know uh, uh, strive towards is to be that because um, you know back in the day everybody. Uh, all these big artists that we remembered, like Freddie Mercury, and um, you know, like think about every old classic band. Everybody, there was always at least one, if not all of them. I'm looking at the Beatles on the wall here behind me here, behind the laptop. Um, you know, all big characters. You know, they all commanded this amazing aura and this essence that they brought to the music. And you know, because of the way music's evolved, I think a, a lot of that has been lost a little bit. A lot of people are just focusing on the playing and the, the sound and that charisma side of things and that conviction, as you say, is is slightly not lost, but it's it's it seems to have lost its highlight. You know the importance. Um, 
and that's to me always the key thing in, in a band um but in humans in general i love a good charismatic <laughs> fun person that likes to you know bring the entertainment but uh yeah that track only human man that was one of my favorite contenders um it, it got pegged at the post i think but um it was a really nice choice <clears throat> to have AJ singing on it. Um, he's got a really unique voice as well. Like it's a uh, this track in a whole sounded like you know, kind of like a love child of several bands together. For me, it was like Sepultura, Deftones, Periphery, Northline bands that you wouldn't necessarily think you know Memphis Mayfair are going to sound like these boys. But there's a lot of stuff. On these tracks that they, you, can, you can hear they pulled a little bit of uh, inspiration from places really cool the, the two vocals on that track together married so well together you know it was, it was sick but this song in particular i think is where the production really really stands out it, it's it's the sound on this track in particular is monstrous it's an absolute beast um you can't you can't you don't need to ever have a track with production any grander than this, you know, it's it's a it's a flawless track musically, and it's one of those songs I'd love to mosh in a mosh pit to, you know, like I'd love to be in the middle of a pit, just having the crack. Um, another track that has like a, another element to it, um, of inspiration. You know, an American Dream track number five. Yeah, you know that's another thing about Matty. He writes his lyrics really well. They're really cleverly written. Yeah, um, you being a, a man of a wordsmith and enjoys the the written word too, you you can appreciate as well. You know how flowy his lyrics are, and um, you know just th he's not just throwing the words down. He's actually really creating something to to marry with the songs rather than just to throw in there. But the uh, track number five, it's really cool. I love the uh, it's it's like a limp biscuit. Uh, either a homage or a play on it you know it's all about the he said she said bullshit you know he puts in the track here it's all about the he said she said um he didn't say bullshit but you know it's just it's just pretty cool that he, he threw that in there you know the minute i heard it, i was like oh limp biscuit man that's cool like i like when bands just throwing a little you know homage to that one of their inspirations maybe you know but uh yeah, like another thing that really stands out in this album for me is the bass. You know, I they they replaced their bass player, so I'm not overly familiar with the guy that's playing on this album. Um, but the sound he got on this album is absolutely killer. Who's the bass player now? Corey Elder. Um, he took over in 2008. Um, as far as I know, but man, there's some tracks on this where the bass, like I'd love to just hear the entire track isolated just the bass like it's so sweet it's like uh real heavy and overdriven but there's just something extra special to it like i you know you can't, you can't go wrong <laughs> when you got a nice bass as well like yeah all right we're gonna keep this episode short and sweet today as due to our interesting <sighs> co-host who's COVID problems I'm so like how would you like to start with the promote with the shout outs or sponsorships? Yes, shout out this week. I would like to give a shout out to my amazing uh, uh, guitar pick providers, uh, Iron Age accessories, uh, guitar accessories. Um, you know, during the week, the, they shared on their Facebook and Instagram pages the, the picks that they made me, the um, the berserker picks they're made of ebony and you have the berserker symbol on them but like that's just one side of what they do they have this really cool um they have a couple of like uh you know signature sets and they're like you know norse mythology there's greek mythology there's it's just and, and any, anything in between and anything you're looking for the the work that they do is absolutely killer so um Please go and check out all the work done by Alex and his team um, at ironageaccessories.com or find them on Facebook or, or Instagram. And uh, just even, even if, you, if you don't purchase, you know, support them. Uh, you know, eventually you might make purchase. But uh, 
just to look at their page, the work they do, it's so interesting. They show how they, you know, um, mold them, how they cut them out. And, you know, it's really cool because they're, they're super creative and they always do a really nice job. I'm looking down at this. This is just a little card I have of theirs. Um, inspired by a timeless era. So they love anything from, you know, the, the older interesting times say the vikings for example so uh yeah that's who i'd like to give a shout out to this week you know you can do more than one a week right? uh, I, I, that, that makes me feel like i'm picking favorites then <laughs> you know i just do the one <laughs> i don't get it but um anyway tesco's ireland tesco's ireland <laughs> <laughs> i've actually plugged them already on the podcast haven't i Ah. Well, all right. Today I've got my mini sponsorships, unlike this one. I've got tons because I want to make sure I include everyone. Um, so today we'll start with my WordPress account. Um, if you guys have been following me long enough, you know I used to do it on Facebook. My I used to post reviews on Facebook, but now I've switched to WordPress. It's a lot better of a domain, and I don't have to worry about the bunch of Facebook. So go find me, Serpent Town ninety four, one word dot wordpress.com you'll find two options reviews contact if you just want to read my reviews click reviews if you want reviews go to contact find me and um i'll give you a review i have to do two reviews before the podcast already so that's that um go to that's zach true. so we're going to look at mr zach moonshine as always workhorse of a guy his his results speak for themselves and if you're a band who doesn't have any PR yet, you're really hitting the jackpot with this guy if you do end up going to him. And I really suggest you do. So if you want to find out more about him, the link will be in the description below. But it is Zach, Z-A-C-H, at MetalDevastationRadio.com. We don't sponsor him every week for no reason. He's a workhorse and he gets results. Someone else I want to bring attention to is BG Goodrich. Shout out for, shout out for him having me on his live and smoke out the other uh this week last week um it was a fun time and um uh the energy he provides the atmosphere and i even got one question from the fans a live question to me saying like what genres do i normally prefer to review and i just said the way things are going now it's mainly black metal and grindcore which it is what it is you know it changes every week but um yeah so that was real fun shout out to him and his and he would like to say that if anyone needs a reaction or review done, especially if you're a local artist of any genre, he wants to hear from you. So I will link it in the description below. Um, the local band Smokeout, great place. Another another great source for um, local bands to get attention. He does a great job. Um, his energy is insane and his platform is off the hook. So go to him. And lastly, as normal, I want to shout out the Gas Digital Network, which reminds me, did you watch the link I sent you? I did. Man, that oh, <laughs> Christ, like. Uh, right, that's good. So, as his reaction just showed, um, there are a bunch of boys who um, really don't give a fuck about joking about anything and everything, and um, the latest episode on YouTube, at least, is um, I, don't, I don't even want to describe it. Go find that yourself. Search up Legion of Scans and you'll find it. Um, there are three comedians with three different styles. One's into politics, one's into impressions and brutal honesty and the other one is just a real ass dude so go check them out <coughs> on gas digital network they have a bunch of other podcasts with different themes one's a rick and morty recap i believe one has zach wilde one has wrestling one has a spook show which they watch horror movies at midnight pretty cool i mean stuff that you never see anywhere else and um i personally go for legion skanks um twice a week one on zoom one live the latest live one was amazing um Featuring Adam Twenty Two from the No the No Jumper podcast. Um, anyway, it's a great podcast, uncensored, unfiltered, and as Ren can tell you right now from the latest video he watched, they don't give a fuck. No, they don't give. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, man, I loved the interview you did on the Smoke Out, man. That was great. The two of you together were brilliant. Like, um, so happy days. Anybody who hasn't seen it, check it out. Nice. I might link that below, maybe. Um, all right, so that's that. Now we're going to go around to our amazing segment. I don't know what you can... Ooh, 
you have something ready. This is the <laughs> devil. <laughs> I thought maybe because you were sick, you wouldn't have anything ready, but. I was there a freeze frame, man. Uh, devil's advocate. <laughs> Uh, uh, I had some better than that, I'm not sure yet. That brings like memories. I had to learn that. that. No, I was younger. <laughs> I know. Man, no. That's probably from uh, when my sister was in school. Uh, I was pretty young. <laughs> um, uh, well, I'm guessing as usual, I have to start this. So, yes, you go ahead, bro. All right. So, for me, I picked up pretty quickly. I listened to this album quite a bit, obviously, throughout the week. And um, for me, the worst track didn't really change. I, you know, I kept thinking, oh, maybe something else will pick my attention, pick my ear, but um, it never did. So for me, the worst track was pretty obvious from the start. And that was track three, Somebody. It's the only track on the album that I didn't like, only because the, the vocal... And and this is weird to say because Maddie's flawless otherwise. But this one song, it's not that he was bad. It was just a weird tone because at the start, like the pre-chorus bits where it's like din, 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 the the vocals, it's just it didn't sound good to me. Um, obviously, you know, if, if it sounds good to you, all the best to you. But um, to me, it just sounded weird, it sounded off-putting, and you know, for someone the caliber of Maddie, um, that's pretty weird. But this is the only song, so. Come on, like out of an album of 11 tracks, and that's only that one part as well. The rest of the song was fine. It was just that one, dun, dun, that part, which happens like three or four times on the song. So I just wasn't a fan of that. Everything else is fine, just that one part. So sorry, Maddie, but the rest of the album was perfect. Um, now, my favorite song, obviously, that was a bit harder because there were so many amazing songs, um, so many great moments. But for me, the, the one song that kept giving me chills, and ironically, actually, it's the same reason, the vocals. Um, no surprise there, but I'm just saying this is one part like of the song that just gave me goosebumps every time. And that was from the song Bleed Me Dry. And I'm talking about the vocal, uh, the chorus. Um, the way he sings, it's like he has this beautiful, like amazing, like like um, towards the back end of the chorus, the second half of the chorus where he does the vocal switch ups. It's like the flow of it. <laughs> it just gives me goosebumps every time I listen to it. It's so powerful. It's so um charismatic and um i every time i got to that song which is ironically the second track but when i got to it it was just like i couldn't get it like like i wanted i wanted that song to go forever <laughs> um so yeah those are my two choices um uh, yeah <clears throat> i nearly went with you on uh both of those actually um somebody for me was was a contender for least favorite as well but um Literally, it was for the same reasons. It, it was there. I think there's just a little, you know, that's it's kind of a, an acceptable thing in this genre where there's okay to throw the odd pop element in there. And don't get me wrong, you know, there's some amazing pop music out there, you know, like ABBA, Michael Jackson, all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, there's just a little bit of that thrown in. And that track had that, so that was almost mine. But my least favorite ended up being um, the last track of the album. Uh, it was literally just that there was too much pop elements. It was like a modern day ballad kind of thing. So, uh, you know, that was a, that was a, a no brainer for me. But like, there's so many good tracks. You're right. Like, there's so many good tracks. Um, you know, if I can try and list out, I, I had so many favorite contenders, which I never had that many favorite contenders on on the album before. Uh, you know, track number two was a favorite contender, "Bleed Me Dry." Absolutely killer song. You know, it's uh, there's like this wicked urgent kind of sound off the drums, and it's a uh, very moody, massive chorus. Um, and then as well, I had uh, you, your turn has my favorite riff on the album, so that almost got it. it that got a bitching for me, like it was like a bitching riff, the intro, you know, so it nearly pegged it, but uh, I didn't want to give it just because of that. But then I also loved um, Left for Dead. It's a lovely old school Memphis Mayfire sounding track. Uh, just brutal, absolutely flawless. Yeah, lovely tempo and great lyrics, you know. So that almost got it as well. I kind of talked about that one for quite a bit. Um, I loved Misery. 
I think Misery is probably the track before I go on to Misery, Death Inside was also another contender. Because that that's just got that meaner Memphis Mayfire sound. Um and it it kicks into the chorus real quick, which is something that bands don't really do so much nowadays. They kind of over embellish the verses and they drag it out. Uh, you know, there's uh there's a lot to say about just getting to the chorus, man. You know, just just get the track out there. Um well, the one that pegged it for me for the winning track was uh, Misery, number eight. The It's the rawest kind of edge to it than any of the other tracks. Um, it's just It just sounded tonally, the sound of it just sat right with me, you know. Um, and Matty Don, uh, one of the coolest things a vocalist can do, and it's really, it's something that most people don't even notice, with a singer like Matty, he's so technical and every everything that he does, he has like mega technique. Um, but this track, he actually went really raw on his technique, you know. Um, he, he, he kind of reeled in the technique and he screamed to a point on this track uh, in such a, a rugged kind of way that it, it would have hurt his voice when he left the booth. You know, and it's, it's like a choice. You're, you're like, right, well, I want this specific sound on it, but if I push past that boundary and lose my technique, I'm going to hurt my voice. Um, but if, you know, if you're really feeling that you need that on the track, it's it's well worth it. Uh, it just means you can't really do much more vocals that day or take a day's rest or whatever. Uh, yeah, so it's killer. There's a killer big breakdown. I mean, breakdowns are, are all over this genre. And, and these guys know how to do a breakdown. But this was nice because it was more like a bridge, you know, like a bridge section, like a middle eight. It wasn't just a breakdown for the sake of a breakdown. And it's just lovely to see, uh, you know, making the effort to, to write it really sweetly. So anyway, long story short, I could go on and on and on and on and on. Um, there's a lot of passion in that song. And it's killer. It's raw. It's, it's, there's, you know, it's lovely. So misery gets it from me, man. So I didn't didn't uh, match up with you at all this week. <laughs> well, remember, remember, guys, songs are always best when it gets straight to the chorus. Unlike songs like unlike songs like Goddess of Beyond the World. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it does take a bit. Uh, sometimes, like not all the time. <laughs> uh, I thought it'd be a fun dig. Um, so, uh, before we, do you have an album ready? Yes, we have the new album coming out on the 1st of July. No, for the it, podcast. Oh, well, I was going to give my own band a shout out there, but the new <laughs> Red Marble Zerker album comes out on the 1st of July. Um, I, do you know what, man? I, it could be the COVID brain, um, but this week I thought I had it, like, you know, at least five times. I was like, yeah, this is the one. And then I was like, no, it's not the one. I went through every genre you could think of. So I'm still in loggerheads. Um, but it, it's going to be something, it's going to be good. Because <laughs> I'm putting more effort into it this week. I don't know why. Uh, it's just very uh, combatant with myself. I was like, oh, that's a great album. I love that. Yeah, but no, but this one's better. So, you know, I'll well, be the COVID break. Please go back to spawn, uh, to talking about your band. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the new album. Yep, new album, uh, United Music Mafia. Uh, the lovely folk there. Um, I just got a text message from the vice president from them just as we're chatting here. Uh, the lovely Frank, the general. Um, yes, we're very excited. Can't wait for this one to come out. It's, uh, it's our fourth Viking album, let's say. Uh, it's been a really busy, busy time. And, you know, I kind of... I think it might, you ever, do you ever like get to a weekend and you're buzzing all week and then you hit the weekend, you get to relax and your body shuts off. I think that's what might happen to me. I just finished this album the other day and I think my body's shutting down. It's like, all right, man, you go die now. You know, nobody needs you anymore. <laughs> so I think that's why the COVID swooped in on me then, you know. What can you do? Yeah, well, so. At least if you die now, you die on a high note. <laughs> Very good. Very Your good. album will get tons more played because you died. That always happens. 
Oh, as as oh man, that, that's it, man. This could be this could be like a cult classic just because I died. <laughs> yeah. So make sure make sure you help your band out and just yeah, just <laughs> broke it today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now nah, this has been really fun as always. Um, yeah, shout out to, shout out to you know Music Mafia. We're gonna get a sound bit at the end of this soon um, when Sean records it. Heck. Um, but in the meantime, as we always say here, same time, same place, or something. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>